issues I want to throw out, and hopefully we have some time for discussion. Thank you. Time we're going to start feeling a serious economic drain on our quality of life if we haven't already. I think, uh, well, t- let me just say, as sort of uh, to be contrarian a little bit, the, uh, if you add in benefits, some people that argue that actually we just have to uh, um, add in benefits. So, for example, the value of health care um, <coughs> coverage that people have gotten has risen dramatically. And you can argue that's only because health care. Cost of is kind of a catch-22 uh, uh, ontology, um, but uh, that said, it's clearly been unequal wage rewards, drastically unequal wage rewards. I mean, the the upper one percent has gotten uh, seen its income dump, you know, go up six hundred percent in the last uh, uh, decade, uh, twenty years, where the rest of us have been flat. Um, so, 
Uh, what was your question? What, what, what is when is he when bad it? women to the workforce? When are families really going to start seeing? I think we started yeah. in 2008. I mean, this is the great reckoning. Uh, <laughs> the whole uh, way we were doing it. One of the arguments that's been circulating now is that the rise in credit, the use of the employment of credit by middle class and lower class families, was a response to rising inequality, trying to keep up uh, with a, uh, an ever widening gap. Um, through borrowing since wages were not rising. Now, um, uh, you know, I think there was another statistic I didn't get, which I think is really stunning, you know, almost as stunning as the women's labor force participation statistic, is that um, for the first time in history, somewhere around you know, the 90s, um, the relationship between wages and hours worked flipped. So in other words, it used to be that uh, the more you earned, the fewer hours you worked. That was, you, you made it up the ladder um, to being the highest paid employee or whatever, um, so you could live the good life. And managers in the 50s kicked off earlier. There were fewer hours in the 50s and 60s than, there, than the lower paid workers did. And hence, going off to the golf course or something like that, the free martini lunch and so forth, kicking off the madman lifestyle of going meeting your mistress or whatever you, they were doing. Um, in, in the 50s and early 60s. However, today, that relationship is work, reversed. Uh, the more you uh, earn, the more hours you work. And you can imagine what, uh, in economic terms, those of you who study economics, it's the difference between the income effect and the substitution effect. The income effect is that if you have more income, you buy more things, right? And one of those things you buy is leisure, time off. Um, and so if you earn more, you can afford more leisure. Have the same lifestyle with a few hours. But the substitution effect is basically the opportunity cost of not working. So if you get paid more per hour, if you go from $25 an hour to $50 an hour, then you think, well, if I'm working, like, I'm just taking off time, I'm making so much more money now. And for the first time in history, that effect trumped the income effect. So no longer is the whole narrative of you work hard to achieve a certain level of lifestyle, and then you live the so-called good life. Rather, it's more of a, a spinning hamster wheel. Why is that? I think that's because of the rise of inequality, because the, each step you go up the ladder, the, the rungs get further and further apart. I mean, it's, it's a logarithmic distribution. In other words, you know, um, the, 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 every step up, the gap between you and the next which is fellow or gal is even bigger. So you, you might be doing better and better at the absolute terms if you're, even if you're, the top, if you're at the top, that is, and you feel like you're doing worse and worse in relative terms. So that's driving a lot of this craziness, I think. So I, but I don't know what you do about that. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Uh, both uh, men and women are working more hours, and, and there's something called the second shift. How's that going now for both men and women? Um, before, I, that, yeah, before yeah. I answer that, I wanted to, I want to say one more statistic about women's work. Mm -hmm. So I mentioned that in the, in, in the 1950s, 70 percent of moms worked. Those 70 percent were more likely to be the wives of the janitor, or the cashier, or the uh, or the you know, other unskilled laborer. Because and she worked because she she needed to work to help put food on the table. Um, fast forward to now and. Um, it's actually richer families who have women working more. Um, uh, again, because probably it's, it, uh, it's, it's worth more to them. If you think about child care and all of that, if you're going to work, if you're going to earn eight or nine dollars an hour, and you're going to pay um, in taxes, you're going to pay four or five dollars an hour in child care. It's not worth it to, to work. But if you're a lawyer who bills at a hundred dollars an hour. Um, it may be worth it to work. And what we've seen over the last four years is that uh, increasingly uh, uh, high-wage women and high-wage men, highly educated men and women, are married. And no longer is the mad men story again of the executive marrying the secretary, the doctor marrying the nurse. The doctor is marrying the doctor. The lawyer is marrying the lawyer. And that's in itself part of the story of rising and falling. In fact, one demographer, Christina Schwartz at Wisconsin, are estimates that 40% of the rise in inequality that they've been talking about is attributable to marriage dynamics and, and women's pain. That's just sort of a, a preface. Um, 
So men, uh, so.